There's some basic financial concepts that everyone should know and remain mindful of in order to promote sound financial decisions throughout their lives. In this video, we discuss six of those concepts and some practical considerations to help you on your journey to financial success. Welcome to Kenny's Concepts, where the beauty of knowledge is our passion. The mission of this channel is to share useful insights and tips to help you on your personal and professional development journey. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If not, I'm super happy you could join us once again. Remember to hit that subscribe button and bell notification to stay connected and know as soon as a new video is out. Also, if you like this video, show us some love and give us a thumbs up. Financial literacy is absolutely crucial and the foundation upon which we build our wealth. With that said, let's jump right into those six foundational concepts. The first concept is net worth. Net worth is fundamentally a measure of financial health and is our total assets minus our total liabilities. Assets are resources with an economic value which we own, while liabilities are those which we owe to others. For example, funds in our savings account is an asset while outstanding loans and credit card balances are liabilities. A positive net worth where our assets are greater than our liabilities is what we want. And the greater that positive number, the better. A negative net worth is where we owe more than we own, and that's not a good place to be. However, do not worry too much if you currently have a negative net worth. This is particularly normal in the earlier stages of life and building a positive net worth will take time. The important thing is that you're always aware of your net worth and making financial decisions on an ongoing basis to increase your assets by investing and saving and reduce your liabilities by paying down debt. The second concept is inflation. Inflation is a sustained increase in prices of goods and services. This is completely normal and expected in every economy. As we know, as prices go up, our purchasing power, which is our ability to afford goods and services, goes down. If we think about this, in order to maintain our current purchasing power, our income needs to be rising at least at the rate of inflation. If our income is not keeping up with inflation, we won't be able to afford as much. So keep inflation in mind and continue to think of ways to increase your income. The third concept is liquidity. Liquidity is a degree to which your asset can be converted quickly to cash with little or no loss in value. It also determines the accessibility of your money. Of course, cash is the most liquid and can be accessed immediately. Generally, the less liquid an asset is, the more its value will grow over time. But on the other hand, there may be situations where we need to access money quickly. For example, if our house is the only asset we have but we need funds for an emergency, it may be difficult to access the funds we need in time. This is why having an emergency fund in cash or liquid assets is absolutely critical. Having an emergency fund of six to 12 months of your current monthly income is a great place to start. The fourth concept is risk and risk tolerance. Risk in relation to money and finance is effectively the likelihood of losing economic value. Many things will affect how risky an asset is. But keep in mind, the more risk that exists, the greater the potential for increased returns. For example, the money we have sitting in a savings account at the bank is considered lower risk because it's deemed to be safe and we can access the amounts we put in at any time. Stocks, on the other hand, are more risky as values fluctuate constantly. This is why the returns on savings accounts are significantly lower than the potential returns on a stock portfolio. Our risk tolerance is how comfortable we are with the swings in asset value and the possibility of losses. Risk and risk tolerance are important considerations when deciding how to allocate our money. The fifth concept is asset allocation and diversification. Asset allocation, as we just mentioned, is how we choose to distribute our money. How we allocate our funds is dependent on our individual circumstances and goals. This is important as it will impact our overall asset risk exposure and potential returns. Similar to the previous example we discussed, if all our money is in a savings account, the lower the risk, but the lower the returns. If all our money is placed in stocks, the higher the risk, but also the higher the potential returns. If we, however, allocate some of the money to a savings account and the remainder to a stock portfolio, this impacts the balance of risk and potential returns we now have. 
This speaks to diversity and effectively reducing our risk by not putting all our money in one place or one asset type. The sixth and final concept is interest and compound interest. Interest can either be the return received for delaying spending or the rate charged for spending borrowed money today. This of course can work for us or against us. Interest received on investments and savings is a good thing. However, interest paid on debt is not so good. Consequently, if we're in debt, we should try to as quickly as possible pay it off. Compound interest is effectively being paid or having to pay interest on top of interest. For example, $100 earning 7% interest annually at the end of year one will equal to $107. If you keep that interest untouched in year two, you will earn 7% of $107, which equals to $7.49 instead of $7. Compound interest is absolutely powerful and is a simple force that allows wealth to snowball over time. To sum it all up, strive to have an increasingly positive net worth, income that grows faster than the rate of inflation, an emergency fund, an understanding of risk and risk tolerance to guide financial decisions, diversified assets, and investments that benefit from the magic of compound interest. Some time ago, I did a video on the saying, a fool and their money shall soon part. In this video, we discuss some general tips and considerations to help financial well-being. I'll link that up in the YouTube card above and be sure to check it out. In the comment section below, let us know if you're aware of all the financial concepts discussed and use them to make financial decisions in your life. Also, which of these financial concepts do you consider to be most important? Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Until next time, stay blessed.